ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bougie Best Friend Podcast. I feel like I'm a news reporter right now. I have to say for today's episode, I prepared a glass of wine because this is going to be one of those episodes where we are thinking about our tough times and some things that we had to go through and we didn't really want to go through. And it's going to be about handling those type of situations, unexpected difficulties. I have to say that the title of this episode came to me before the actual content of the episode. I'm mostly winging it, but so the title is When Things Don't Go According to Plan. And that was inspired by my Christmas. For those of you watching on YouTube and Spotify video, and my friend Esther gifted me this bottle of red wine. So good. Oh my God, I didn't drink wine in so long. A long, like four days. Okay, so I will now tell you what happened to me this Christmas. First off, Christmas is my favorite holiday. Always been. I was just always so looking forward to Christmas. And somehow, <laughs> the past, like, I don't know. I don't even remember when was the last time I had a really, like, amazing Christmas. Oh, there's always something. So last year, Wesley and I my boyfriend we move <laughs> I don't know I just always feel so weird even like talking about him because he doesn't really like ha- like he doesn't really use I mean he uses Instagram but like he doesn't post anything I decided I'm gonna share him more like I am also trying to get him to be on the episode <laughs> we'll see if that is gonna happen but anyway let's go back to my story my story is that I love Christmas and I always loved Christmas and then somehow I just like never had a nice Christmas this year I started super early with the decor. Like I started before Thanksgiving because I'm European. So Thanksgiving is not really a holiday to me. Like I don't care about it. I mean, I'm I'm grateful and thankful, but like it's not my holiday. So I wanted to get the Christmas tree as soon as possible because last year we didn't have a Christmas tree because we just moved to this apartment. And it was like, I'm not going to have a Christmas tree before I have, you know, a couch okay we had a couch right away but like I'm not gonna buy all this Christmas decor and all this stuff like I'm gonna spend money for something else so that's was last year we didn't like have a Christmas really like we were moving in and I don't know about you but moving I can't fucking that's like the worst thing I get actual like anxiety when I'm thinking about moving when I'm moving I always have a panic attack when we're moving um we moved like to a few apartments and there was like these talks that we're going to move to New York like he wanted to move to New York at some point and obviously I would move with him but I don't did not want to and I was really not thinking that I want to move to New York last year we didn't have a Christmas tree because of that the year before I really don't remember but I know oh actually no that was a nice Christmas okay I have to say that was a nice Christmas that was the first year that I met his family and that was nice yeah that was nice but I think also always around Christmas I really miss my family because I haven't like had a normal let's say Christmas for the past 10 years like normal in a way like what I used to do and like how I grew up in the first like few years in the US I just didn't have like family or close friends here so I was just like doing random Christmases but this year we had amazing plans for Christmas so we were going to his family again in Chicago and I love his family honestly like they're such normal nice people and it's so refreshing (laughs) to be around somebody like that constantly like nobody's like faking or I don't know I just feel so genuinely comfortable in their presence and I think when you reach that level that you can like have a conversation with his family members his siblings or something without him there that's like a big move in your relationship because like you are getting more comfortable around his people and that's great like that's great uh, news because you also need to like the people that you're going to be spending time with like if you do end up getting married to this guy like you're going to be constantly surrounded with his family but anyway I love his family and we were flying to Chicago and we were both fine and Rocky was with us and I was like so pumped for Christmas and Home Alone House is a few minutes away from his house in Chicago suburbs I had all these like high expectations I was looking forward to this for like a month and his mom cooks great so like I was I I was like great I'm not gonna have to cook she's like a great chef I'm gonna see the home alone house and I'm gonna chill for two days none of that happened 
I mean, we did go to Chicago and his mom did cook. But the first day we were there, we were just like chilling with his siblings. We were playing this game code name and I was like crushing it. I was so proud of myself. It was the first time I was playing it. And also like all these words are so difficult sometimes for me. But um, I, I crushed it. Christmas Eve, we have dinner and we say that the kids, the kids, I mean, I'm also one of the kids, I guess. We wanted to order sushi and they order sushi from this amazing place oh my god i just ate sushi today the first time <laughs> so funny i ate a lot like i love sushi that's like my jam and then we started watching a movie with his family and i told my my boo that i have some stomach pain i think i took something like anti-bloat or some kind of capsule but stay the same so here we are watching a movie with his family feel sick the whole time like i'm so bloated i feel so uncomfortable and everybody else is fine. All of a sudden, I feel in my stomach that I'm about to barf, puke, vomit. I don't know what word, what word you'd like to use. I am really not the type of person that like just pukes like that. I really don't like it. Even when I was like going out and partying, you know, somebody would get drunk and some people would like like to, you know. I don't know if this is like grossing you out. I know some people are so weird when it comes to talking about like stuff like that. But I'm not. And I rushed to the bathroom and I couldn't even make it to the toilet. I um, did it in the sink and I was so embarrassed. And I called Wes and I was like, oh my God, I'm not like, what happened? And, and then I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's wrong. I did not know what was wrong. He was like, okay, don't worry about it. I'm going to clean it up. You just go take a shower and like go to bed. Okay, cool. That's what we decide. Awesome. I do that and I lay in bed and I still feel like a lot of pain but again I'm not like the type of person who usually has like stomach issues like that so I don't even know what to do like I don't know what to expect all of a sudden I start getting really hot like I get these like hot flashes <laughs> this is so I'm like sharing so much right now this is so gross honestly you should just fast forward if you don't even want to hear it I puked all over myself I couldn't even get out of bed and I started like throwing up then started crying hysterically i was like what's going on with me what's wrong i was so confused i took another shower go back to bed again i'm sick and in another 20 30 minutes one more time very eventful christmas eve merry christmas grinch was in town i was I was just unhappy for so many reasons. First of all, I love sushi. I, I didn't want this to like impact my relationship with sushi. And then I just realized that we just ordered sushi today. I just ate sushi like before I started recording this episode. And that was the first time I did that. And I didn't even think about that. That was so interesting. But I love sushi and I really didn't want that to fuck up my relationship with sushi. I'm happy that we're good. And also like I was just so embarrassed in front of him. Obviously, I can't stop it. Obviously, I didn't like plan this. But I just didn't want to be, the, you know, doing that in his house with his family. I got it all out. But then the following day, I was just so weak. And that was Christmas Day. I was so weak. I had no appetite. I couldn't do anything that would like get tired. What is going on with me? I just don't get sick like that. And then nobody else got first I was like oh it's food poisoning but nobody else got sick and we all ate the same thing we just I mean sushi you really share like you everybody has everything so I don't understand where how I why I got sick I was just like trying to think like what why did this happen like what can teach me because I'm always trying to like whenever I have you know, we all have these like high expectations and you always think when you reach this, this is how it's going to make you feel. So I was like, I just, I can't wait to just get to Chicago and just like, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be so Christmassy. It's going to be such a vibe. And then something like this happens. And then you're like, if I don't have my health, nothing really matters because I was there and everything was like happening the way I wanted it to happen. But because my health was not healthy, <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. It makes me realize like how many things we take for granted every single day. And we should appreciate everything in life more. I don't know. That was like one of my lessons because I always try to understand because when things don't go according to plan, there's always a lesson there. Like what can we learn out of this situation? When you think about all the rejections you had in your life, they all kind of led you to where you should be. I'm sure everybody listening to this podcast experienced heartbreak at some point. And 
you obviously never enter a relationship knowing or thinking it's gonna end that is definitely something unexpected when things like that happen and unfortunately or fortunately that's all a part of our story because how would we learn and how would we build our character if we are not you know going through trials and tribulations of life also jobs how many times you think that you need to like get a certain position or do some kind of you know you you want your career to go in one way and then somehow there's just roadblock after roadblock or maybe you even get to the point and you're like this doesn't feel like I hoped it gonna is gonna feel and I know that's what happened with me and when I was doing makeup I just thought that like the highlight of my life is gonna be when I see my name in like Harper's Bazaar or L or like if I see my face in a magazine like look at me this talented girl and after I had all of that, I was like, this doesn't feel fulfilling because I think I wanted the recognition in a certain way, but I didn't, I was still like ash ashamed or shy to admit that I wanted to be like the center, you know, like I wanted to be the talent. I used to pretend like I want to be behind the scenes. I was making myself small and I didn't allow myself to admit it out loud because I felt like people are going to judge me or they're going to be like, oh, who does she think she is? Why, do you, why does she think that she's like cool enough to do that or be that? I just decided to own it and be exactly who I am, not apologize for my existence. And I remember when I first started like changing my content and posting different things, so many people were... Um, you know talking shit and I wasn't expecting that I, I expected people like my friends to support me and then sometimes you just get so disappointed when you're close like the people closest to you if you're in social media like they don't like and comment on your posts they don't engage like if you have a business that's what really pisses me off like if somebody has a small business and when their friends and family don't do anything about it, you know, if you open a bakery, <laughs> why can't they go buy bread there? I mean, hopefully they will. And, you know, all of your friends and family sometimes just don't support your business. And that can be for many different reasons. I don't know if this is really related to the topic of the episode that I had in mind. But sometimes like people don't want to celebrate your success because they can't even perceive that you are leveling up and they're not because you guys were both like at the same level at some point and they just can't even fathom that you are doing something better than them and that they are you know staying the same or, or stagnant so that's why they can't celebrate you or also sometimes when they see that you are willing to step out of your comfort zone and just try things and you're like fearless it's that scares people sometimes and they don't want to admit that to themselves so it's just easier to say like oh my god look at her she's so cringe and then later those people are going to be like congratulating you on your success and stuff like that that's what happens all the time but you know that's like a disappointment that happens in people's lives like definitely your friends and family you know the the betrayal and some other issues that we go through with relationships like it really sucks and then it's always like how to deal with stuff like that. A lot of my friends who are married right now and they're like planning uh, having kids, a lot of them like have issues conceiving and I have endometriosis and that also is one of my fears. Our whole lives we were uh, told that we need to like be so careful when we're having sex because we're going to get pregnant so quickly. And then you see so many people have issues with that. And then I'm thinking about all these content creators that are going through the same thing and they're sharing and documenting that with you know the world I think that's so important because if you only see five of your friends having you know they get pregnant right away it's like you understand that you're not alone when you see other people going through that and you see that it's more common than you think and now when I'm at this age when people are like talking about stuff like that it's very common to have issues when it comes to like having kids and then everybody's like oh just go freeze your eggs and stuff like that okay cool yeah but like not everybody can afford that you know it's ten thousand dollars or 20 or 30 i don't even know but it's not like so one two three we all have these visions of like how our life is going to be like like you are going to meet that person and then this is going to happen and then you're going to get married and then you're going to have kids and then there's always like stuff that happens along the way and you kind of just have to learn how to roll with the punches 
And the first step is definitely seeing the reality, like accepting the situation for what it is. Or also I have an example if like you think you're going to get a certain job. Coming back to what I was saying about like my makeup job, you think you want something and then you get it and you're like, oh, actually, I didn't really want that. And then you're kind of disappointed because you expected that to make you feel a certain way. Or like moving to a city and you expect it, you're going to love it and something. Because that's why like when I was moving to Miami, I got this apartment. It was furnished for six months. Not this one. My first apartment. And I got it for six months because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like it here. And sometimes people go into these decisions and they don't know. Like they just make a decision and then it takes them a while to get back into it. Also, if you are dating someone and they want you to move to their city. You need to be really careful about that and you need to really consider like what are you doing for this? Is this relationship worth it? Are you guys going that way? Do you think that he's serious about you? That you can just like leave your entire life here and just go play house with a guy? Is he gonna provide for you in the beginning or like what is his plan? Is he planning to like you're not gonna just live your entire life? Not live, <laughs> leave. You're not gonna leave your whole life for like a boyfriend potential like he needs to make sure that you are set when you get there like if you are going to his city and his family and something like he needs to make sure that you have maybe a friend even that you can have somebody for like a lunch or something like so you're not constantly just dependent on him and waiting on him and like just stuck there constantly he needs to like set things up for you so now we start thinking like how do we solve those situations when we feel you know things are not going according to plan or how do you navigate or how do you pivot like what do you do wellness and taking care of myself is such a big part of my daily life but when things get busy i easily get overwhelmed luckily with ala moves i can still find time for self-care which honestly helps me stay sane ala moves is a streaming on-demand wellness platform that features yoga practices fitness routines meditation sessions and so much more from one of my favorite brands elo yoga my favorite aspect of ala moves is that it's not just a workout app it inspires you to take care of your body mind and spirit I've been very open about my mental health and how much meditations have helped me and you can find meditations, sound baths, and breath work on demand whenever you need a little reset. It's like your wellness guide. And as a self-proclaimed self-care queen, I really enjoy pampering myself and their gua sha, dry brushing, face yoga, and nutrition classes have been a game changer. Start your year with an Ala Moves wellness routine that fits your schedule. Get a 30-day free trial followed by $12.99 monthly or 20% off annual membership by going to alamoves.com and use code COCO. That's A-L-O moves.com code COCO in all caps. Alamos.com code COCO all caps. I think that the first step is just accepting the situation, seeing it for what it really is. And, you know, sometimes let's say with breakups, this is the easiest um, example. And I like I'm giving examples. With breakups, sometimes you break up and you're like, oh, but maybe we're going to get back together and maybe he's going to regret it and maybe he's going to change and maybe this and maybe that. But that really doesn't happen because if you're in a relationship, and I had to learn this the hard way, if you're in a relationship and things are supposed to work out or you both are willing to make it work and you both are willing to make changes and you're willing to work on it, then it can change. But if you are just, if you're the only one trying to fix a situation and he doesn't give a fuck or he doesn't change his behavior or he doesn't adjust, like you just, you just can't act the same way if you are in a relationship and if you're not in a relationship because a lot of girls have an issue with like you know he, my boyfriend doesn't spend enough time with me he is always with his friends he has these like female girlfriends and it's like when you enter a relationship you can't just you know some compromises have to be made so it's up to them i mean it's up to all of us to decide what what is okay with us and what isn't i don't even know where i was going with this so yeah number one is that you just like accept the situation oh yeah this is what i was saying sometimes we like lie to ourselves because we can't accept the reality of the situation because you're already like future planning with this person and you just see that none of that is going to happen and also you just realize that this is a part of life and that you are not always going to be happy and that with the good comes the bad and you know I'm not going to give you all the like cliche saying right now sayings right now but you know that 
without rain, you can't see a rainbow. And so then, okay, now what? So first you accept the situation for what it is. Then it's really important to take a pause, take a moment to yourself. Don't try to rush into something new. Get live like give yourself time to be sad. Give yourself time to cry. <laughs> give yourself time to learn who you are again because if you are I'm just going to continue on the relationship example because I think we can all relate to that. Give yourself some time to learn who you are again because a big part of your personality was this relationship or this something that you identified yourself with, maybe like a job even. If you worked at a company that is, you know, it was your favorite job and you just got fired or like laid off or something and you like, you identified yourself with that something, and now you don't have that and you need some time to like start learning who you are or I mean that happens with athletes all the time when they like get uh, like they get nerve damage or an injury <laughs> I don't know why I said nerve, nerve damage first but like when athletes get injured it's like who are you now after that and it's so fucking hard to go through these changes in our lives but that's the thing like you just have to accept it and you gotta take a pause to kind of to assess what you are going to do and what you are doing you don't want to just rush into something it's like think of it as if you're in a movie and now the main character is something happened something dramatically happened and now she's like getting up again and she's putting her coat and she is marching out on the street and she got this but like she needed to you know break down or a little bit you gotta slow down for a second think of yourself today looking back and some of your biggest problems or biggest setbacks or biggest like heartbreaks in your life didn't that actually led you to something better let's say again in a relationship and the relationship was bad and you went through a horrible like heartbreak and it, you were so sad and you you just you just had a really tough time and then you realize certain things like you learn from that situation and you know sometimes people write to me and they're like I can't get over him. It's been so long. And it's because you didn't learn the lesson you were supposed to learn and you didn't work on yourself enough. You were just dwelling constantly about this relationship and you didn't put in any actual work to get better. I mean, maybe you did put in the work, but not enough. Like, this is gonna suck. This is gonna be so fucking hard. And it's a lot of self reflection and realizing why certain things happen and also realizing what you did wrong in that relationship because I'm sure in every relationship people like they're both doing wrong things in an in abusive toxic or horrible relationship obviously <laughs> it's not your fault that he's a fucking psycho but I think we always just like what did you learn from the situation how can you not do this again and also you are given people in your life people and situations and jobs and whatever like you're giving that in your life to teach you something it's almost like a, like a lesson like somebody comes into your life just to teach you a lesson and then they gotta leave not everybody's gonna stay in your life forever they're not all supposed to stay in your life forever because you don't have energy for all those people like you gotta preserve your energy so sometimes you know that you need to release someone for somebody else, somebody better to come in. And maybe it's going to happen that you have somebody good and then you have a shitty one and then you have a new one that's like the best. You know, it doesn't have to be that like after every, it's not like tit for tat. But I do got to say that you always learn something at the end of the day. Like you always learn something. Even like, let's say if you're at a job and you fuck something up like real bad, you know that you are never going to make the same mistake again. If you hopefully still have your job, you know, now you're going to pay attention because maybe this time you made a mistake that didn't matter as much. I'll give you an example from when I was working in restaurants. If you are working at a small restaurant and maybe you mess up somebody's order, maybe you just didn't understand what they wanted or you just mess up and it's a small bar but you learn at, on that situation, like you learn how to do it properly. So like you learn not what not to do. Now you like you learn your lesson because what if you didn't learn that time? Imagine that you are serving Beyonce and Jay Z at, at the Oscars. <laughs> I don't know, and then you like because you didn't learn that lesson at some point. Now you make that mistake in front of somebody or something that is more important to you in your life. Why people intern? So you can learn early 
so what to do and what not to do how to act at a work environment i don't know if this was making any sense i was just like rambling this wine man is hitting me basically what i'm trying to say that after all every like setback in life you are going to grow as a person it is supposed to teach you something and it's bringing you one step closer to your purpose and to like the reason why you're on this planet you're gonna see that you have so much more in you than you thought you're gonna surprise yourself with your strength you're not even gonna realize that you're actually so strong and i love that for you another important thing when you're going through issues in life is to lean on your friends and family because you don't have to go through everything alone i used to I used to never ask for help and I still don't really ask for help unless I really need it. I just don't like asking people for things. I don't know why. I don't know if I like, if that's because I feel like I owe them something if they, I don't know. I just like, I'm just going to rather handle it myself. I don't know. And now I'm trying to stop, like, I'm not doing that anymore as much, but like in this situation when I was sick, you know, I, I really needed was to help me <laughs> like I could not do like shit myself um so like I lean on him for support and I talked to my mom and my dad and my brother and like his fiance and then we were all like having a conversation I was telling them how hard it was for me <laughs> so don't ever hesitate to talk to your friends and like if you're going through heartbreaks always make sure that you're not overly talking about it you're not like complaining because nobody wants a complainer but you can even ask your friends like are you available for a 30 minute vent session because i need to talk shit about xyz situation i think that's a great strategy because you you also don't know what they're going through in their life and if they're available for something like this because if somebody's going through their own issues maybe they just don't have the mental energy to listen about your problems so like be mindful of that too but never be afraid to ask for help and then again, sometimes, you know, being able to accept situations for what they are and like be flexible enough to change and do something that you weren't expecting. It's like, you know, people always say like getting out of your comfort zone, that's where you grow. But that is actually really true because if you're just doing the same thing over and over again, you're just going to be the same person. And <laughs> I really don't want to like do all these quotes, but also it's like when one door closes, another one opens if you stayed in the same situation, that's the life you would live. I'll give you another example, a relationship example. I don't even know if you need an example, but I just want to give one. Like, let's say that you're dating your high school sweetheart and you get married to him and you live in the same city and you, you know, you just do everything that you think you need to do. The same thing that your mom did, your grandma did, like, you know, just get married, have kids and stay in, a, in, a, in your small town or whatever and and that's the life you would live and that, there's nothing wrong with that life but let's say that you break up with that high school sweetheart and then you end up becoming a stewardess and then you travel the whole world and you see so much and you are just have a totally different job or you move to a foreign country and you start a new life there because you were not in that relationship anymore and i'm sure at that point that relationship really hurt and the breakup really hurt but then you like you go to places you experience things you meet people and you learn so much about yourself so you always have to be open-minded when you're going through stuff like that yes you're gonna like cry and you're gonna be so hurt have an open mind that good things can happen to you and it is a lot of hard work to rewire your brain and i mean even this morning i had a little mental breakdown <laughs> But that happens when I'm overwhelmed and that happens often. But try to understand like why are certain things happening? And obviously you got to be grateful for what you have because I feel like being grateful and just exuding that energy is like the language of the universe. And that's how you like, it's almost like fireworks. Like if you throw away a firework, no, if you, not fireworks. It's almost like when you're swimming. Okay, this is a great example. It's almost like when you're swimming and then you create those little bubbles. It's like because you're putting that energy out and the bubbles, I don't know, <laughs> this made sense in, in my brain. But it's like almost like the language of the universe. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I, I feel like when you're like being grateful, the universe brings it back to you. Like it's almost like a game. I don't know. I like it though. Like you got to be grateful. And anytime I'm in a bad mood, I just start thinking about the things that I'm grateful for. And it can be the most basic things like my my apartment, my health, Rocky. They're, they're not basic, actually. That's why I was like pausing there for a second. 
like you just say thank you for the things that you have and then you just rewire your brain it's almost like tricking yourself <laughs> that you're not sad anymore i was just thinking about like all these other examples that i provided and i just also need to mention that you know christmas sometimes you have certain expectations about christmas and you are seeing all these like happy families on instagram and you think that your family is going to be exactly like that and then you come and then i don't know maybe your parents got into a fight your siblings are fighting um somebody you know is hung over the whole day and like it's a whole shit show and you are imagining this picture perfect family and then you don't have it and then you're like upset and i know that sucks and also you know like sometimes you are at a family gathering and things just get heated real quickly <laughs> like things just get heated real quick and it's because there are some unresolved underlying issues that people just didn't they just didn't talk about it in that way and i think with these like older generations like our parents they don't really at least not where i'm from like my parents and i we have a great relationship but it's not like we are over like we're not like examining what happened or i don't know i i think that i'm more analyzing situations today with like my boyfriend or some my friends or something but like with my parents they don't really get like super in depth what happened and then sometimes that can build resentment and i'm sure you know you're fighting with your sister about a pair of earrings that she borrowed without asking you but actually you're fighting about the fact that she never calls you when you're when you are like not reaching out first you know like you always have something deep inside that you're resenting or maybe it was a situation that you didn't resolve properly or like nobody apologized or something and then you're just like sweeping under the rug and moving on and then that creates that like anger and toxicity and then you're like fuck but i thought this year is going to be different but it's it's not going to be different because you didn't like resolve stuff from before and then you just like trigger each other <laughs> by saying certain things or speaking in a certain way and then everybody's just like fuck <laughs> this is a bad christmas i think the conclusion is that life is always going to happen and you just have to look at it in a way that things are happening for you not to you like for your benefit for your growth for your everything like for you to prosper and not to you like nobody's gonna nobody's punishing you like nobody's like trying to work against you what really matters the most is how you're going to react to the situation or how you're going to handle the situation. Are you going to be in your victim mentality for a long time or you're going to accept it and try to work on it? Or are you going to just like blame everybody? Or like, what are you going to do? Are you going to take ownership of the situation? Are you going to try to fix it? Because that's fully in your control. How you react to situations is fully up to you. And that's the only thing you can control. So be mindful of your actions and what you're doing because, and your thoughts, because your thoughts are so powerful. And I think that a lot of us don't give that much, you know, you're like thinking negative things and then you just like catch yourself like stuck in that negative circle. When things are not working out or you think they're not working out, they actually are working out in your favor. So you have to trust the universe and you have to surrender, recognize that whatever is meant to happen, it will happen. What is meant for you won't pass you by. I had to end the episode with another quote because I'm a quote girly. Okay, ladies and gents, thank you for listening and I'll see you next week. Bougie Bestie, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Be sure to subscribe to my podcast so you never miss out. I release new episodes every Friday. If you love Bougie Best Friend, please leave a five-star rating and a review. Your support means the world and it helps the show grow. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Coco Beauty, and you can find Bougie Best Friend on Apple, Spotify, and all other major podcasting platforms. Love you. Bye.